Hi, Steve here. Now, I'm making this video for everyone who finds layers and layer masking a little bit confusing. So it's kind of an introduction to these concepts. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that you haven't used these particular tools before, and I'll explain them all basically from the beginning. Now, first of all, the layers panel over here is where all the action is happening. And if you haven't got your layers panel on the screen, if you can't find it, then all you need to do is just come to the uh, window option and select layers. Now every time you open a new image it's going to be on its own layer and it will be the only layer that exists. So what I can do now if I just duplicate this layer I can do that just by right clicking and choosing duplicate and click OK. Now what that gives me is a copy of the original background layer placed into a new layer on top of the stack. So if we look now we've actually got the original layer background and then background copy just sitting on top of it. Now nothing looks to have changed as far as the image is concerned because we've only duplicated this background and not actually changed its appearance in any way. So at this point basically you can think of it as having two identical 6x4 prints and placing them one on top of the other and you can only see the top one but the other one is still there at the bottom of the pile. In theory if we had these two physical prints we could change the top one, draw over it, do whatever we want to it but no matter what we do to this top print the bottom one is going to remain unchanged. So let's just kind of do the equivalent to that now and what I'll do I'll just take a brush, I've got a white brush here with 100% uh, opacity selected and I'll just draw a squiggly line through there. Now I'll just also do like a more realistic edit just to uh, just to keep things sensible and uh, yeah anyway now so what I'll do I'll just with that background copy layer selected which I just brushed into I'll come to the image menu and choose adjustments and I'll just pick curves and what I can do with this curves layer is just grab hold of this uh, this line that goes through the middle here and just basically push it up and increase the brightness so I'm going to exaggerate the effect here just for the sake of the uh, demo so once I've done that and I'm happy with it, I'll just click OK. And now that effect has been applied to that top layer in the stack of two layers that we currently have. So because we've made this change just to this top layer, if we actually hide this now using the uh, this little eye icon just to the left of the, uh, the layer thumbnail, if I click that to hide this layer, we'll see the original layer completely intact underneath. OK, so let's just re-enable that top layer again and duplicate it once more to make a further adjustment. So let's go um, so right click on there, duplicate layer, click OK. You can rename these when you, uh, when you do this yourself. Um, you know, just make them something useful, but I won't bother with that at the moment. So I'll just make another adjustment to this now. So I'll come up to Image, Adjustments and Okay, let's say uh, let's say hue and saturation. So I'll just grab the saturation slider, whack that up. Again, not really a very realistic um, edit, but just for the sake of example, I'll click OK, and that's now applied to that top layer only. So now what that gives us is basically three layers that represent each stage of the editing process and I can just go back and hide each layer. So this, if I just hide this top layer, this saturation layer, we can see the one below it where we brightened it. And if we hide this one, we can see the original just sitting there untouched, which is great. But there is a problem of using layers in this way. So let's think, what if, what if we decided that we don't like the edit we made on layer 2 and we wanted to do it again? So say let's assume we decided we made this too bright, for example, and we wanted to just go back and you know tone that down a bit. Well, to do this, we would basically have to scrap everything we did after that point and revert back to this first um, edited layer. So in this case, it's just this one layer above that we would have to... Uh, to scrap, you know, if uh, if we had five layers that we'd done loads more edits to, then we'd have to delete all of those to basically get back to this point where we're redoing this uh, this edit. 
Now, as you can imagine, you know, this is going to be a complete pain in the behind if we've spent a lot of time on the uh, subsequent layers and we decide we want to go back and redo this one. This is basically where the concept of non-destructive editing comes to the rescue. Now, the reason we would have to revert in this example is that we're editing the actual pixels in each layer each time and then subsequent layers are being created based on those edited pixels from the previous layer. So for example, what I mean by that is, you know, we've copied the background and edited the layer that was created as a copy of that. And then based on that copied edited layer, we've then created a new one, which we've then edited afterwards. And if we went on through this, uh, you know, we could end up doing maybe up to 10 layers and doing 10 different edits. And, you know, each time we're editing the pixels based on the previous layer and what it looked like at that point. So really the better way of doing this is to use what are called adjustment layers. And, and I'm just gonna delete these two layers, these two copies here that we've created. And uh, I can do that just by highlighting them, you know, do them one at a time or press shift from the uh, top one to the bottom one and just drag them down into the bin icon down here. Okay, so we're back to the original. We just got the background layer only. Now adjustment layers, what they do is they enable us to make a whole bunch of these types of edits on layer after layer, but without affecting the original background image or making copies of that background and editing it at all. So yeah, let me just show you. It's probably easier to visualize if I show you. Now, just down here at the, underneath the, uh, you know, the panel on the right hand side, we have this, uh, this icon here, which is kind of like a circle with like a half black half white um, icon. don't know if you can make that out on the resolution of this video, but if I click that, we get this new menu that pops up here. And what that gives us is most of the same adjustments that we can find in the, uh, in the image adjustments menu. So we've got all these here. And you know, most of the ones that are available there are available in this, uh, in this pop-up here as well. So what's going to happen if I pick the uh, curves adjustment layer from this menu? What that does is create its own special layer that contains the adjustment only and not the actual image pixels with the adjustment applied. So, you know, this isn't actually a copy of the uh, background at all. It's like an adjustment that's on its own layer. And just using this uh, this panel here that's appeared when I um, when I added that, I can increase the uh, brightness in the same way that I did the first time around. So I'll just do that now. And, you know, I can hide this uh, this adjustment using the uh, using the icon here like I did the first time around as well and I'll just go ahead and create the uh, the hue saturation and duplicate kind of what I did in the first example so I've got that new layer but at this time it's an adjustment layer so there's no pixels being copied here and I'll just whack the saturation up again so yeah, it looks quite garish but you know it has to be uh, kind of easy to see on the video uh, depending on the resolution and quality that YouTube's going to show it to you at. So basically, I mean, apart from that white line that I drew across the picture, um, we've pretty much done the same thing as the first time around, but we've done it in a way that we haven't had to copy the background. And you know, each layer is actually the adjustment only. So the real benefit of doing it this way is that now I can actually go back to this curves adjustment layer and if the panel here doesn't appear, then you can just double click on the icon right there and it'll open. And I can actually just go back and you know, readjust this curve that I did the first time around and I can do whatever I want to that. And all the while, the, um, the hue and saturation layer that is above it in the stack, that remains and is unaffected by what I'm doing to this layer beneath. So basically it really doesn't matter how many adjustment layers I add, I can always go back and edit whichever ones I want 
or just hide them completely. You know, I can just toggle that off and then the saturation layer on top is completely unaffected by the curves, you know, by the fact that I've turned the curves layer off. So if you haven't used these types of adjustments before, then, you know, after you finish watching this video, just go and open up an old image, just anything you've got laying around and just, you know, have a play around with, uh, with these adjustments and, you know, just get used to what each one of them does. Just, you know, you're not going to break anything by, um, just adding these and fiddling around with the sliders and curves and doing whatever you want. And then once you've added a few, you know, just get used to going back and editing them again and readjusting them until you're sort of, you know, fairly uh, comfortable with, uh, with the concept of adding these layers. And in fact, you know, if you want to, you can also go back and try the, uh, the original um, method of just copying the background uh, just so you can see the difference and you know it really helps if you run through these examples yourself just uh, to help with your understanding of these uh, these ideas and concepts so now what i just want to talk about is a i want to give you a quick introduction to layer masks so essentially a layer mask is is literally used to cover up or mask a layer either in part or in full so let's say you've added an adjustment layer but you want to hide the effect that it creates, but you want to hide it from a certain part of the image, you know, not the whole image, then you can use the mask to do exactly that. Now, adjustment layers, the ones that we've just been adding here, they come with their own layer mask already attached, which is this white icon or this white thumbnail just to the right of the, uh, of the main layer thumbnail, which is this little circle. And whenever a new layer mask is, is added or created, it starts out completely white. And this basically means that nothing is being masked out or hidden from this layer. Now, if we want to use the mask to hide the layer in a certain area of this image, all we have to do is take a black brush and paint into that area, uh, making sure that we've selected this, uh, this layer mask thumbnail. So just making sure you've got the corners around the, uh, around the thumbnail there. So just take that brush, I've got a black foreground and I'll just increase the size of my brush so we can get a better view of what's happening. And because I'm on the curves, uh, the curves adjustment here, so this is the layer that brightened the image. Now if I paint with a black brush into this layer mask, what you'll notice as I do that is that the, uh, you know, as I move the brush across there, it's becoming darker. And that is basically because I've, I've painted with a black brush into the layer mask, essentially hiding or masking out that layer on that area that I've brushed. And what you'll also notice is that the layer mask thumbnail actually shows my black brush stroke. And, you know, this helps to kind of visualize and it helps signify that the mask is currently covering that part of the layer. So now if I toggle this off and on, you'll see that actually it's only the top and bottom portion of the image that's, uh, that's being affected by this curves layer, which is the brightening effect. Because what I've done is with my black brush, I've masked out that effect from pretty much the whole middle part of that image. So at this point, it's important to note that the layer mask either hides or reveals what's happening in this layer only. Now everything below it and above it will remain untouched. So again, to get yourself used to this concept, just take some time to open up an image and add a handful of different adjustment layers and start experimenting with using a black brush in the layer mask of each one and you know, just to get a feel for what's happening. So in the same way that you can use a black brush in the layer mask to hide the layers effect, you can also use a white brush to basically undo the black brush strokes if you make a mistake or just change your mind. So what I can do here now with the white brush selected and just making sure, hang on, let me cancel that. Just making sure that I've got the layer mask itself um, highlighted. Just click there once. And if I wanted to say, you know, undo the black brush stroke on the left part of the image, I can just do that now. And as I brush across, obviously making sure I've got a white brush selected. Um, yeah, I can just brush across there 
and essentially undo the black brush stroke that I did first time around. So now when I finish that brush stroke there, you'll see the layer mask has only got this sort of black kind of blob on the right hand side and the rest of it is, uh, is white, which means the effect is being shown in those white areas and being covered up in that dark area only and just with a quick toggle you get to uh, see that there. So the original brightness of that background layer is still visible in this area because that's the part that we've masked out the curves adjustment layer. Okay, so there is a saying, um, kind of like a stupid little rhyme really that people say to help remind themselves uh, which way around the black and the white brush and you know what, what each one does when you use it on a layer mask. Um, I don't really find it that useful, but I'll tell it to you anyway. So, so the saying goes, white to reveal and black to conceal. Now, the reason I think this is a stupid saying is because if you can't remember which way around the saying goes, like 50% of the time I don't remember, um, then you're stuffed anyway. You know, when I try to repeat it to myself, I'll end up, you know, so white to reveal, black to conceal, or black to conceal, white to reveal. There's nothing in that saying that actually helps you remember which way around it's supposed to be. So anyway, forget that. <laughs> what you can do is actually just think of it as, um, you know, if you just want an easy way to remember, then just think of black. Uh, you know, a black brush being like an eraser, uh, but except that it's an eraser that you can undo with a white brush. So let's just think if we want to um, use a layer mask on this, on this saturation layer that we've got here. So we've saturated that quite a lot. Now, if, um, you know, if we didn't want that saturation to be applied in the sky, then, you know, we can treat the black brush like an eraser for that, um, for that layer. So with the black brush selected, just click once into the layer mask and just you know, erase effectively that, um, that adjustment from the sky by brushing into that area. And um, okay, well, let's do it for the, for the water as well because that looks a bit dodgy. Um, yeah, and there we go. So hopefully that's um, given you a good starting point to you know, just go off and experiment with these adjustment layers and layer masks. And, you know, the more you use them, the more familiar you'll become. I don't think it will take very long just to, uh, just to get used to these, these ideas really. Now, hopefully this has been the best introduction video to layers and layer masks ever. And I've explained it as well as could possibly be, but you know, I severely doubt that's the case and I'm sure there'll be a few questions. So, if you're watching this video on postprocessingmastery.com website, just uh, just leave a comment below the video and I'll be checking the comments regularly and answering any questions that anyone has about this video. And if you're watching on YouTube, you know the same applies. Um, you know, I'll just be monitoring the YouTube comments as well. So yeah, that's it really for this video. I hope you find it useful and you can use it to kickstart your journey with layers and layer masks. Okay, see you next time.